All right. So. But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Oh boy. Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules. No, that's gonna fuck things over. Majority rules. You really think that's a good idea? Exactly, especially if we have no culprit yeah. now. Our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you. You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Oh yeah, well, I was just wondering. How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? That is also true. Yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... maybe someone picked the lock? Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. No, that can't be it either. Oh, trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Sounds like someone really needs to shut the fuck up right now. Oh, why exactly? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how shrine she was. That and that's the answer right there. There's no way Sayaka would let someone in because what does it say? That room when the was discovered, Makoto's room Makoto's room key was also found in Makoto's room. Sayaka originally asked Makoto to switch with her when someone attempted to force her. Is it this one? I mean, just in case, let me see. I don't think- I think that's the only one. Yeah, that's definitely the only one. Okay. Where is it again? Bam. I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Knowing what she'd been through. So how did the killer get in then? The door for That's anyone. the one thing I'm really confused about. They better what summarize her this. Being scared was a lie. Huh? She could have lied. After all, she did get out of the room to get the knife. So yeah. But then again, that couldn't be for self-defense alone. It could also mean she's trying to kill someone. Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? No, I completely agree with you. There's this possibility that she lied about it and she tried to attempt to kill someone. There's something I want to talk about. Wait, hold on, what the hell is this? Come and see me in my room. Check the name. Wait, whoa, what the hell? There's something I want to talk to you about, just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and right. I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, Nope, Did I didn't you? write this, obviously! No, I didn't. But, of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. That's a signature? What kind of fucking signature is that? I thought they were all written in cursive or something, right? Then that note, Sayaka wrote it. But why? Why would she write that? 
The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. That's a possibility. You got an invitation. Oh my god. From the ultimate pop sensation. What young man one resist? The one that's trying to be sensical from psychopaths. I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? Wait, huh? But... And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> do tell. Would you like to hear what I have to say? Alright, Sipikalaste. Uh, Very well then. Pay attention. Okay. Make your argument. Do tell. Dorm nameplate. Sayaka and Nakoto switched rooms, correct? Right. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says my room. So, yeah, so they didn't so know if about the that note. Then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. Yeah, but the nameplates were switched, wasn't it? So yeah. What? Where did I... Uh, the killer went to my room instead of Sayaka's, and the reason for that is... It has to be because they switched... Yeah, that. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yeah, we switched the rooms. The place they were asked to come, it specifically says, my room. Okay. So someone would have gone to Sayaka. Exactly. The room that Makoto was in. Uh, triangle, right? No, it's wrong. The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, yeah. their rooms are right next to each other. So switching the name. Oh come on! Yeah, yeah. Okay. So switching the yeah. And the one who switched the names was, well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Of course not. Right. Okay. Then who did it? Sayaka. There's only one person who could switch the nameplates. The only other person who knew how to. <laughs> Me. No, it's Sayaka. I got it. Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. There's something I want to talk about, just the two of us. In five minutes, come see me in my room, Sayaka. Check the nameplate to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. So that she... She was trying to blame me for the murder! Makoto, please get your blinders off, please. She's a lost cause anyways. But not telling them you'd switch rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. Yeah, let's do that actually. Where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. <sighs> But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Exactly. Should we just remove uh, that guy from uh, our jury from now on? I fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. 
Was that perhaps used during? Definitely, the there's some glow sticks on her. <laughs> glow sticks. There was some shine on her wrist. Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on. This is one long fucking trial, isn't it? it? Might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Because of the glow. The reason I know Saika's wrist was broken with this fake sword is because when you look at her wrist, there's no doubt. Where is it? This thing. Yeah. I got it. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there, where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. Is is that gold? It sure is. Specifically. The gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because I got it. Because she got hit with the sword. <laughs> Shut <Right> up. <on> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. And so the truth. This is an interesting jury. Closer. All right. Then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room, and what led to Saika's death? That's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about the non-stop debates, okay. Are you getting used to these non-stop? Not really, but alright, do tell. Starting with the next debate, I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your shoe cylinder. Ah, oh, shit. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak points to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage from your influence gauge. You can press the L button to rotate the cylinder and press... okay. Press and release the L button to cycle through each bullet. Or you can hold down the L button to use the left stick to select a specific bullet. By the way, if... wait what, huh? If you use... if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinders. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck and have fun. How many bullets do I have in total, though? Make your arguments. Okay, yeah, there's definitely okay. There's three definitely definite bullets that we have to take care of. Fighting broke out. The kitchen. Oh. The culprit grabbed the sword. Okay, now I get what those things for. Okay. Kitchen knife set. All right. The sword based sneak attack. That's what broke Miss My Zoner's wrist. All right. So That's one orange. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. All right. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. There's only two oranges. If that person with the sword really did attack first, there's no explanation for how a certain part of the sword got damaged. I need to review my uh, evidence again. Oh shit, Rubes! I need to remove, review my evidence real quickly. So, let me see what happened exactly. The sword was, uh, okay. What about the short sheath though? I took this from the gym. The sheath was found some distance from the sword itself and showed, it showed evidence of being scratched with a sharp object. So, because of the way the uh, sword sheath and the sword itself was placed into my room and not the bathroom, the struggle was not in the bathroom itself, but the fight during the uh, my room. The sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. Okay. Sword-based sneak attack. <laughs> and that's what broke Miss My Zono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too, and they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. What's my replica sword sheath? Okay. So, replica sword, replica sword sheath, and the kitchen knife. If that person with the sword really did attack first, there's no explanation for how a certain part of the sword got damaged. Hold on, what again? I need to really review again. Sword sheath, let me see that again, just in case. The culture doesn't have the shield just found some distance of the sword itself. It shows evidence of being scratched. With a sharp object, so the sword itself. 
uh, the sword replica sheath was used as a defense mechanism. So it has to be the okay. But Kuro took this from the gym. Blah blah blah. So I found the sheath in the middle of the room. The sword handle was missing some of the gold coating, as was part of the blade. So, yeah, this thing's getting a lot more harder than harder. So why not? Kitchen knife set. Sword, replica sword. A replica sword sheath. Sword based sneak attack. That's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. Okay. So she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her. I gotta be really careful about my. I gotta be really careful though, but I think it is the uh, replay. I'm thinking she defended herself with the replica sword sheath and not the knife. When the first blow was dealt. Considering how the it has scratch marks on it, so let's start with that. Oh shit! Oh my god! I keep forgetting what button does what. Circle is skip. L does that, and triangle does that. Let's hope that's the case. What you think? Something I said is wrong. In a w I, it's something, but it's not that one, was it? No, it's not that one. I need to think m a bit about one more time. There must be a contradiction there somewhere. Okay, so it's not that. The fighting broke out. So that can't be used. Maybe she did. Or maybe she did use the knife after her. I don't fucking know. Sword-based sneak attack. That's what broke Miss Mizono's wrist. Let me feel the kitchen knife, actually. Oops. God damn it, I'm gonna have to memorize a bunch of buttons when I'm doing this. Alright. Um, does it show... Does it show the anything about the, uh... Does it? It just says it's stolen. That's it. Okay, so yeah, the kitchen knife has nothing to do with anything. So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the uh, oh my god, I meant to press triangle, but I keep forgetting which button does what. But it's okay, I got like four hearts. <laughs> I can re I can always retry, maybe. The sword, and that's when the first blow was Just in case though. Oh shit, I can't. It's only my truth was fuck. Okay, so I can't save here. Sword based sneak attack! Sword based sneak attack. What that's that? what broke Miss Mizono's wrist! Let's try a replica sword for that one. <laughs> Fuck, wrong button? Oh my god, triangle! I don't even think it's that one, is it? No, it's not. So it has to be, um... I got three lives, I'm fine. So is it really being literal now? Oh, fuck it. Let's do that then. Really? Okay, right, fuck. I keep forgetting. Not every single thing has the Okay. Okay. So a sword based sneak attack. Something about that. The culprit grabbed the sword. And that's when the first blow was dealt. The sword based sneak attack. Oh, it's not it because it was deflected by the There we go. Okay. Wow, I'm I'm not rolling with it. <laughs> Apparently. There. It's not a sword based sneak attack because I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean... Like oh yeah, no glitter too. Oh my god, why am I being dumb? <laughs> Fuck, okay. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you are going to attack with the sword, you take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? With the knife, so... If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere, then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself, but then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. 
sorry, but I don't think Saya can use the sword to defend herself. Yeah, I think she was the one that's trying to kill someone. How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. A certain, uh, certain part of her body that shows she never used the sword. If you want... Alright, okay, so... Her broken wrist, her palms... Yeah, it's her broken wrist. Shoot. Looks like just everyone bears my... Fuck. What? Wait, hold on. Oh, fuck, 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 fucking minute. Wait a fuck. What is it again, then? Let me see her dead body, just in case. I forgot about that. Wrist. I mean, I guess she could have used it or something, but... Her hair, hands appear to be completely clean, except for the index left. Okay. Oh, whatever. I got plenty of tries. Not like it matters, anyways. A part of her body that shows she never used that sword. If you want to use a sword, which part of your body would you have to touch it? Wait, what? If you want, if you want to use a sword, which part of your body would you have to touch it? Palm. Oh yeah, because it's completely clean. Derp. Fuck. I am just uh talking wow. about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean. So I don't think she ever picked up the sword. I am very slow, aren't I? Just by looking at the palms. Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you- Shut the f- no, Oh my god. It's not it at all. No, if you keep perpetuating that, maybe I will call you fucking ugly from now on. So shut the fuck. Alright. There's no way Saiko washed the gold coating off her hands because there's a certain regulation that talks about- Oh yeah! Water was off! She's afraid of water. What is that, Neptune? I got it. According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night. When am I gonna get, bring back my life? I didn't know that. I gotta be really careful. Different. You smell like a big fat ugly donkey! Says the big fat ugly donkey. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... The one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen... Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. I really need to review all this shit. Hold on a minute. Oh, I can't select, so I can't... Okay. The one who damaged the sheath would have to be the one without the sword. I got it. Oh, yeah. My life is actually going back, so that's good. She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. So, si yeah, Sayaka was the one that had the knife, then. The one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms... ...was to blame me for the murder! ...pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... ...on me? I told you not to trust that bitch, Makoto! Damn! She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work... Is it really Makoto? That's how you pronounce his name? Room swap a secret. 
if the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have. I'm so glad there's voice acting in this one. If I had to talk about all this shit, then good god. So all that's why she switched the names. But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Nyegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then you were saying she had this all planned out? Oh yeah. Shit. But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true. Makoto, take your blinders off! Face reality, even for me as the player. I did not trust her to begin with. Hey, you guys have totally derailed the argument. Blame Makoto for not relating to the player. Super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh, yeah, we got to decide who we think did it. Yeah, we had to figure out the... The self-defenser guy. Makoto just... Makoto, yeah, whatever. Right now, you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. Yes, I'm perfectly capable. I'm not sure if the main character can, though. If I was in this crime predicament right now... Yeah, okay. I, why do I have to do all the fucking work? What about you guys? Is it really all over? Obviously, I'm committed to finding out who killed her, but what can I do? I mean, as far as clues goes, there's nothing left. <laughs> All right, whatever. So is there multiple bullets again? Make your arguments. Dying message. Okay, uh, that's easy. It's easy just to say, "Hey, decide who did it." But there just aren't any more clues, right? Very well. Yeah, there is one. And let's review all the clues we found up to this point one more time. Do we really have time for all that? <laughs> I think I know. Die. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die! Alright, I figured out what to do. There's still one more clue, yeah, I'm sure of it. Okay. It's easy just to say, hey, hey decide. We did. But just all right. Clues, right? Bam. There's one more clue we have left. The dying message. Leon. Break! Thanks for reminding me, by the way. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her. Remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? That is true. The, um, the killer could have used her finger. There's no question that Saika wrote that message. I can prove it. Left index finger? The killer could just move her arm and do that or something. That could be a possibility to make her think that she wrote it. But again, whatever. Let's assume her left index finger did it. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. Or if the killer used her finger as a writing utensil. Well, then again... Because she's upset, unless the kill- no, yeah, okay, yeah, that's definitely true. Okay, let's just go with her finger. I see. She <clears throat> broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure, I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? Turn them upside down! Three, seven? Hey, Chihiro, you're a computer nerd or whatever, right? <laughs> you should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not- Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? 
Turn it upside no, down. It's just, a look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Yeah, there's, yeah, that. Uh, right. The connecting line is barely there. So I assumed it was one, one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa. You might have finally just said something worth a shit. Come on, guys, I solved the mystery a long time ago, okay? Don't get your hopes up. Really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Turn it upside down, you fucks! Damn it's new Oh my god, Makoto. Can can I replace myself into this predicament? I'd be a smarter investigator than this asswipe. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Oh my god, the game really has to tell the answer. Oh my god. Makoto, you fuck! Rotate it! I, I think maybe. Maybe I can see something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. It would have been really cool if we were the one who solved it, not the game. But whatever. You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. So, whose name did she write? Saika's dying message reveals the killer's real killer's name. If you turn her message 180 degrees, it should come crystal clear. Select someone. Oh, this is a voting time. Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. What the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. You're awfully very, very suspicious now. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Exactly. Like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. Well, we have a uh, proof, so... The killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Ooh, that too. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? The evidence that Leon tried to get rid of? Is that thing we found on the ground in front of the incinerator? Yeah, wasn't it? Well, wait, what does the crystal globe have to do with something? Oh, is this one again? Next to the incinerator in the trash room. It apparently... Let's just assume it's this thing. I got you it's not the crystal ball, the is it? Yeah. I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? You also have the right shirt color as well, so... But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's True. right. There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally right. starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. The burnt remains of the button-up shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something... There's something about it... Ah, what's that? There's something about it we need to pay attention to in order to figure out who is responsible. Where it was disposed of. How it was disposed of. When it was disposed of. When? Well, I got three chances, so whatever, fuck. The, ne the time the shirt was destroyed, if we focus on the killer... Shoot! 
Yeah, right, I need to find uh, evidence, blah blah blah. So when they are not talking, I know I'm fucked. Okay, so it's not that. We already know where it's disposed of. There's something we... Or maybe... Wait, no, what? How it was disposed of? We know it's because of the incinerator, so where? No, because I was thinking, like, because where it's disposed of, the one who got the key or something, but no. Yeah, I'm just being an idiot right now. <laughs> Alright, let's... So it's how it was disposed of. If you look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. You'd need the key to get in. <laughs> and the one with the key was... The person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash. Right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that means you, Ifumi. No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. That's exactly what hap what proves that Leon is the real killer. Alright. Make your arguments. How many arguments do I have? Shattered Crystal Ball. Okay. Okay. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the evidence. Which means the only possible suspect is whoever had the trash room key. Okay, so the person who would have had the trash room key was... Huh? Me? No! Alright, I saw like two orange bars thing. There's absolutely... There's that absolutely was a way to use the incinerator without using the trash room key. The killer was able to turn the incinerator on by using some- OH! He threw the thing! Derp, okay. Wait, wait, hold on, let me see, hold on, let me see the broken trash thing again. Sorry, not the broken, yeah. Shards of glass were found next to the room in the incinerator. As it turns out, the boa was to fit comfortably into the palms of someone's hand. Apparently, just a hero left it in the ball laundry room. So anyone could have come along to take- Well, that seems really extreme to me. Okay. Let's just assume that. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy the- Wait. I don't think that's true. Alright, there we go. Break. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? You could throw it. Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but... Uh... But how would you use it? You throw it. Derp. The killer had to use the glass ball in a certain way. Divine with it! <laughs> roll it, no, roll it. And the button is like on... Yeah, and knowing the star baseball player here. The simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch and the incinerator would come to life. So I'm through that... through a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Kifumi? What did he say before? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on? Very strange, I'm quite certain it was off the last time I was here. Perhaps it was a work of a fairy. Kifumi had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. That is true. No, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least... 
30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... A star baseball player. It would be because the... It wouldn't have been much of a challenge at all for the killer because... Ultimate baseball starter. <laughs> Fanfic creator? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Clairvoyant? Because the killer I don't even know what the hell the clairvoyant was. Star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer! These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! Do you have any evidence to back up your case then? You still won't admit it? Okay then, Makoto. Go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with right. that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. In the next episode of Danganronpa, stay tuned for that, guys! Holy shit, how long have we been recording this game? Let me check real quickly. Fucking hell, 1 hour and 41 minutes. Yeah, we're taking a break real quickly, so see you guys then.